26, the Detroit Tigers have an off day, so I wanted to do a progression video on one of our younger players, so we're going to do that on Matt Manning today, the ninth overall pick in the 2016 draft, 6'6", uh, six, six, uh, about 200 pounds, so a lot, uh, a really big frame, could definitely add some more velocity on that fastball, but the first thing I wanted to look at was the pitch, the pitch mix he has. So we have four seam, sinker, slider, changeup, and curveball. The four seam, he throws about a 40% clip. The sinker, 17. The slider, 15. The changeup, 14. Curveball, 11. So in my opinion, I don't think he should become a, a force. It's just too much of a mix between the, the four other pitches. It's all around 10%. I would definitely like to see either the slide. If I had to pick the slider or the changeup, I'd pick the changeup. But I'll get into why I picked the changeup a little bit later. But the changeup definitely should be his second pitch. And I would like to see that thrown at like a 25% usage and then that fastball like 37 and then everything else whatever up to 100 I think that would be the best pitch mix for him and that reasoning is I feel as if our our three stars have too many of, of the similar pitches so Matt Scoobal and Casey are all four seam slider guys the, the, that's their main pitch well their main two pitches and when we go into a playoff series, like a five-game set, a seven-game set, one of those, we're not going to want to have the guys that are throwing the same exact pitches. Because when you get to the third guy, which I'm guessing in a playoff set, that'll be Manning. We'll go my school, Manning. By the time we get to Manning, they're going to know four-seam sliders coming 60% of the time because they saw it the last two days. And I know pitches move different with each pitcher, but... It's a slider. It's a four seam. It's still similar. You can pick it up. You can look for. You can sit on it. It's just, I don't think we should make all of our pitchers pitch the same pitches at such a high usage. We should definitely have someone pitch a great splitter, pitch a great or a a strict sinker ball pitcher, a strict pitch to contact pitcher, something like that. So that's the reason why I would like to see his changeup be used more as well. As that fastball down a little bit, and then the sinker and slider and curveball mixed up around 10% to 15 each as well. Uh, the next thing I wanted to go over is a comparison. So I, I made comparisons for MLB and the Tiger, a, a former Tiger player. So we're going to go over that and why I think those two players are the comparisons. So the first one we have here is Rick. Porcello, that's my Tiger comparison from Matt Manning. I don't this that doesn't necessarily th mean he's gonna have the similar like um, stats or, or when their careers end, but I, I feel that they pitch the same and they're gonna have similar uh, attacks to batters. So if we if I can find the Rick Porcello, here it is. Sorry, that's Lance Lynn. This is Rick Porcello. Okay, so I brought up his 2014 season right here. So you're looking at his 20. This isn't 2020 Rick. This is 2014 when he was with the Tigers. A pretty decent year. So he threw uh, the sinker, four seam, and curveball, and changeup, and slider. All at about similar clips. Well, the curveball, changeup, slider are similar clips. Uh, heavy sinker, four seam. So I think if we were able to make Manning into something like that, but instead of the sinker, we do a changeup. Those those pitches have more downward movement, so it's they're not necessarily similar pitches, but you can definitely get away with using a changeup as well as a sinker. So I think the the changeup mix with Matt would work perfect, and uh, that that should definitely be what he's going for in the future. So the reason why I compared him to Rick Porcello was I don't think Matt Manning is going to become a strikeout pitcher necessarily. I think he's going to become a pitch to contact, use your defense, um, double plays, uh, that that kind of pitcher. I don't think he's necessarily going to be a high swing and miss strikeout guy simply because if you look at – let's get back to Matt here. Uh, here it is. If we look at his whiff percentage and his chase rate, they're all pretty average. So, or they're below average, to be honest. That whiff percentage is in the one percentile that uh, 
chase percentage or chase rate is at 17. It's not very great. Now, that barrel percentage is something that I do really think is impressive. It means they're not barreling the ball up quite as much when Manning throws, which is that's really important. You don't want guys to be squaring the ball up and hitting it hard with high exit velo. So that's something that I think is going to play to the contact pitching is they're not hitting it hard. They're not hitting it on the barrel. So he's going to get ground balls. He's going to get pop-ups. He's going to get uh, guys swinging under the ball. It's going to be out. So that's why I don't necessarily think we should make him just a strikeout power pitcher, even though that's what he was drafted for, being 6'6", with a fastball with a range of 92 to 90 or 92 to 95, and then we were hoping to get him up to like 97, 98, which we've seen him throw 97, 98 like once or twice in a game, but he he mainly stays 92 to 94, which is not it's not you're not gonna blow that by MLB hitters often. You can definitely get a couple strikeouts every game, but you're not gonna be putting up double digit strikeouts every night like old JV or Degrom is every day. No, I think we should definitely make Matt into a change-up, four-seam sinker guy, make him pitch to contact, and then that'll the more suit his uh, pitch mix. So then the next comparison I had here was the MLB comparison, and I made it to Jameson Ty. I had Lance Lynn too, but I liked Jameson Tyone for this simply because he also throws heavy four-seam, but he has that curveball in there, and I know Matt has been working on a knuckle curve. All of our young pitchers have seemed to develop a knuckle curve. I think Fetter is really high on that pitch, so he's uh, training it to all of our guys. So I think Jamison Tyone and Manning can be similar in the way Tyone gets guys out on strikeouts is that high fast. Well, he likes to go high heat, and I think Manning, when he does get strikeouts, that's the way he should be going. I don't love the way his sliders move on left-handed batters. They're okay on right. He doesn't necessarily get great swings, but I don't want that to be a strikeout pitch. The curveball, he hangs it too much. I don't want that to be a two-strike pitch. I think his fastball should become the two-strike pick pitch, and that's why I would compare him to Lance Lynn. Now, or not Lance Lynn, sorry, uh, Jameson Tyone. Lance Lynn would also be, he, he, Lance Lynn I think could be the ceiling for Matt. If, if he were to develop a cutter and really just throw in, and definitely get that sinker up and then obviously throw more change-ups than Lance is, but if he were to be able to develop a cutter, I think cutter is one of the best pitches in baseball, so that would be able to help him a ton. Um, the last thing I want to talk about with Matt was his future with the Detroit Tigers. So when I look at a player, when I say they're a bust or anything like that, I don't necessarily mean their whole career. I mean, are they a bust with the Tigers? Are they Did they bring value to us? Was it a good draft pick for us? And to be honest, I don't know what we're going to do with Matt Manning. We drafted him in 2016. We have six years of control. I know that, so we'll have him for a while. But once those six years are up, He's going to want a big contract, especially being he'll be about 28 at that time, st- still 6'6". He's going to want a max contract. Now, I know these next six years will play out, and if he deserves that or not, or anything like that, but I know a team will be competitive and give him a high contract, and we're going to have to compete with that. So if we want to put all of our money into Matt Manning, when at that time, school and Mize are also going to be needing contract extensions, but do... All these young guys, and we're not a high market team that's going to spend on a lot of different people. So, is Matt necessarily going to be the future of the Tigers pitching rotation, or is he going to be here for five, six years like Rick Porcello was, and then he's going to leave and have his best years somewhere else? Which that is a big fear I have of mine because I don't, f- I, I don't feel we keep our pitchers long enough. Uh, as of recently, we haven't really had any great young guys, but. I, I don't really think Manning is going to have a stellar next next six years. I think he'll have two seasons in there where he has a, a mid-three ERA, maybe a lot of four ERA seasons. He may even have an injury in there. So are we going to want to pay him at the, at the deadline? So do we want to have him have these awful starts and have him progress slowly? Is that going to be valued to us in the future? I'd love to know. If you guys think we're going to re-sign Manny in, in, in six years when, it's kind of, when we're out of control, and he's going to want that big contract, uh, yeah, let me know. And I'm going to be making a Casey Mize comparison video on 
Saturday because tomorrow there is a game, so that's great. I'll do a pregame before that and then a postgame after it. So pregame we'll talk about players I think that will have a big impact on the game, uh, uh, players I think should have been playing, stuff like that, how I think the game's going to go, and then we'll come on after the game and we'll see if I was right or you guys can make predictions in the pregame and see if you're right. We'll come back and talk about it. And yeah, that's great. That's about it. This is a great first one, and we'll make another one soon.